Aha, I finally got one in the studio, my friends. Check it out. This is a 1966 Chevy C10 body from Proline Racing. Uh, I've given this classic beauty a bit of a futuristic paint job. You can see it kind of picks up purples and greens and uh, overall just looks very beautiful to me. Uh, I love the color. I think it's going to look great on film in the future. Uh, for those that are wondering, PS49 uh, sky blue anodized aluminum. PS23, which is a gunmetal, and the PS4, which is a standard blue. I did a full coat and a light coat after of this, one coat of the gunmetal, and then one coat of the blue, finishing it off on the inside with the gunmetal so we don't have any kind of see-through issues uh, when looking through the wheel wells or kind of filming this out on the trail. One of the things I wanted to mention uh, about having a unique uh, color like this is on a body like this that has so many angles, you'll see, I'm going to admit right now, I am not an amazing painter. I never have been. And it's a bit of a challenge for me, even when I know I stand, you know, at least uh, for a paint job like this, about 40 centimeters away. Uh, give it the nice light passes, but when you have super angles like this, it's kind of hard to get that paint to go in there evenly. So remember, if you're painting, take your time. Uh, if you actually make mistakes like this, you can be like every other RC hobbyist out there uh, that can't paint and cover it with stickers and decals. <laughs> that is my secret guys uh, or what I could say instead is some wonderful scale accessories now the reason we have this body here particularly is for my buddy Powell over at RC nerds check it out over at shapeways Powell actually does multiple scale accessories for different types of vehicles as you can see right here and as you go down, everything comes in a raw format and you can paint it if you choose, or if you choose uh, like a, a flat matte black, uh, which is what we're gonna be doing, like a finish on it, you'd actually don't need to paint them at all. So that's what I have in this box right here. And I wanna look at the accessories we have, because if I can cover up any of my blemishes and make my truck look better at the same time, I'm in. <laughs> So these are the stickers from Proline. You can see the Chevrolet, there's one here in white. Uh, have the grill and the headlight option right there. The sides for going up uh, the cab roof. And a few C10 badges and some dark stickers up front. So I'm gonna keep this because I'm gonna use some of these for sure. But what is in the box? Check it out. <laughs> it's like an avalanche of RC printed parts. Awesome. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 17 of them I can see. <laughs> and through the editing magic, you can see here everything is unpacked. Got everything from the uh, classic headlights to the light buckets to uh, door handles on this side. There's two of them. Two windshield wipers, uh, tailgate chains on the back, uh, mirrors. This is going to be for the side cab area to replace those stickers. Steering wheel. This looks like rear, um, rear light buckets. And these little knobs are actually for the dashboard. Okay, first things first for me. The part I'm most nervous about doing is this grill. Uh, and it does say Chevrolet on the top here. So I wanna make sure that it's, of course, going the right way. I'm just gonna kinda dry fit it. There we are, gonna have to cut it out perfectly. I got most of the dust out of the way. Start peeling it back. You guys can discover the true paint job with me. It's so satisfying to undo one of these bodies after you've painted it to see the final result. Unless you screwed up majorly and then it's a bit of a bummer. <laughs> there we are, looking pretty nice. It's a heck of a shine on there. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> okay, let's fit it with the bumper now or with the grill. Stylish. I just got to fill that gap up there. Oh yeah, it's a little, little bit uh, bent. So what I'm going to try and do is heat it up just a little bit to try to move it back. So the glue doesn't have to really fight uh, to stay on the side of the cab like that. So here, just use a lighter quickly here underneath. Probably a little crazy. That made it much, much more flexible and then kind of cool it off right against the body like that. That way I'm getting a good form fit. Looks like I have a T in my hand. <laughs> Hashtag ranch life. <laughs> Just using a few dabs of uh, Gorilla Glue. This is a gel glue, it sets up very fast, so uh, it's kind of handy, but just don't overdo the glue, because if you have too much glue, when you go to stick it on the side of the body, it'll like uh, come out the edges, and then just looks terrible. So here, this is why I straightened out this plastic piece. I'm going to hold it here for about one minute. Just cleaning up the plastic a bit. Checking out exactly where I want to put it. Here's two little side badges for the Chevy C10. I'm going to glue them right here. Actually, I may actually just use some double-sided tape. Okay, got the other side done. And because this is uh, 3D uh, printed parts, of course we're gonna have different types of depth, right? So I'm gonna be aware of that when I'm crawling out on the trail. Who knows, I may end up scraping some of these off. But look at that, the front grill, the headlights, uh, the windshield wipers, everything coming together, looking pretty darn good. So here is the inside. You can see I put the knobs on. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to break the sliders apart. They're very close together. Um, but I did use double-sided tape on the tabs that are there. Been putting some extra decals on there, working with it. Got to clean up the, the windshield. But you can see I've got the dash on the inside. And it seems fairly secure in there. So here is some extra wide Velcro. This is how I'm going to attach the body instead of using two screws. So that way if I want to take it apart uh, in the future, I can do that quickly and easily. Okay, and then when I'm ready to pair it up, take that second Velcro strip off, bring them together. Well, what do you guys think, eh? <laughs> the extra goodies on the body certainly uh, make it unique and pop. Loving the windshield wipers. The front bumper, I actually, I could have used double-sided tape on here, but instead I drilled two holes. Sorry, Powell, I know, but I wanted this to be on extra sturdy. Uh, you guys, I wanted to make sure it was there. So a nut on the back, another nut on the back. Uh, also, the second thing I did was I didn't put the light light buckets in up at the top. And the reason being is I actually don't have a light kit yet. So instead of having them pop out or like at the back having them pop out uh, and losing them, I'd rather wait and have the lights so I can secure everything. Check out the tailgate chains on either side. I'm gonna have to fill in this gap right here. Probably the only thing I'll do is take some electrical tape, uh, put it in there, and then I'll back that electrical tape with some sort of uh, netting or gorilla tape or something just to kind of fill in that gap that's right there. Uh, but overall,
overall, I love this. I think it is a great way to pump the truck up, uh, to make it really look, uh, you know, like one of a kind and unique. And uh, yeah, I got one more thing to show you. Ta-da! <laughs> what the heck? This is, as you can see, adhesive for shelves and drawers. It's a liner. All it is is a decal, but it's wood grained. So what I'd like to do is for the back box to give it a little bit more of that, you know, authentic feel. Let's uh, cut some of these strips out and put them in the back. Stretch it out to size here. I cut the piece that I need. And I'm using the razor blade just to cut the splines out in between the wood. Okay, so I'm making sure that the, the grain goes the same way. I'm gonna be doing the bottom piece now. I'm gonna lay it right beside that backbone or back spline, I guess. Score it as straight as possible, and then peel it away. Next line, same thing. Behind the, the, the spline, make sure to make that line. That way you know where the edge is. And then just score the paper. and keep going. All right guys, thank you for standing by while I got everything together. Here you go in three, two, monster trail truck. <laughs> Check that out. The accessories from uh, RC Nerds. What you guys can 3D print today is just simply amazing. Powell, thank you so much. Bro, I know you're killing me right now because I put two screws in the outside of the bumper uh, and I could have used double-sided tape. I guess that would have been the answer instead of using the screws, uh, but I did use a, uh, a nut on the back of the screw on either side so I can ensure that this didn't fall off uh, and, and of course, those uh, light buckets themselves. When I get an LED kit, I'll be actually putting them in as well. But for the time being, I'll put these in. Thank you for printing these off. They look great. In your pictures, when you put a yellow light behind it, this thing looks like a classic truck. Yes, shout out to the old school tires that I have. For an old truck body like this 66 Chevy, I thought might as well put some old tires on it. I do need to give it a little bit of lift in the back because obviously I'd be getting some body rub right here. But check it out, the side trim looking awesome. Glad to have some windshield wipers that are functioning well right there. You guys that are keeners, you're gonna notice that I actually did the mirrors a little bit differently, okay? Now normally on a C10, it's just a single uh, arm that comes up with the mirror. But one thing I notice about Shapeways uh, plastics, uh, and I've noticed this with multiple uh, products from Shapeways, is that it can be very brittle. I don't know if it's the type of plastic or how it's uh, m uh, printed out, but it can be brittle. And being out on the trail, I want three points of contact here. One, I drilled right into the body, put the stem into the body, plus I also glued it here and close to the stem elbow. That way, at least it gives it a chance without snapping off. The grill looks fantastic. As you guys can see, is I actually made the mistake and cut it about one uh, blade depth too deep. So what I'm gonna have to do is go in, I'll put a, a piece of uh, electrical tape, black electrical tape uh, along the inside, and then I'll cover that with Gorilla Tape and it'll just black that in while still leaving this beautiful grill exposed. Wow, I'll turn it around. Let's have a look at the tailgate chains. Also here we can see tailgate chain on the other side as well. It's these little accessories that help your truck pop off, guys. Now I could say, uh, here, check it out. Powell also sent me these uh, other ones for the front and the back, uh, but I have to say that overall, I don't have a light kit right now and I don't want to lose these uh, for the back, though these lights would fit perfectly in there and they certainly will when I have the proper light kit. 
What a really neat truck. Let's have a look at the inside of the dashboard. I was able to get in all the knobs and of course the steering wheel. I hope Proline actually gets those seats and things back in uh, or else I'll have to fabricate something for the driver. Man, overall what a great complete package, a great color. Uh, the back bed turned out awesome. Just took me a few minutes to do, got it at Dollarama, <laughs> right, for like a buck, a buck 29 at most. And with these small, you know, things like from RC Nerds, the creativity that's coming out of you guys all around the world is stunning me. It's shocking me. Um, thank you so much for reaching out to me and asking me to collaborate. Uh, like I said, guys, please go check out the RC Nerds page. I'll leave it in the video description box. Uh, and what can I say other than go outside and have some fun with the RC hobby? You know I do, and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. I can hardly wait to get this thing out on the trail.